All right, uh, it's five o'clock, so let's call the uh, recess agenda, April fifteenth, to order. Uh, go ahead, James. The head uh, department head reports. Whatever you're going to do with them. Thank, you. thank you, Mr. Mayor. And if it's and if it's all right, um, if I may make a quick introduction, and also to do a roll call, so we can establish quorum for the public yeah. listening in. Yeah. So for, for the record, this is this tele, this is the Town of Manio's telephone conference call for the recessed meeting of the Board of Commissioners, April 15th, 2020. Uh, this is Town Manager James Ayers here at Town Hall. Other town staff members present on the conference call include Town Clerk Becky Bryholtz, Finance Director Shannon Twitty, and IT Dire Department Head Carl Woody. Uh, you'll notice that I identified myself when I started speaking so that the Town Clerk can capture what I'm saying for the minutes. And it would be great if all participants on the call could do the same. This meeting is available to the public and the public will have the opportunity to provide public comment at the appropriate times on the agenda. Also, the meeting is being recorded so that interested parties can hear the meeting should they be unable to attend. Now, in order to establish a forum, we'll do a roll call to verify members of the board of commissioners who are present. Of course, we'll start with Mayor Owens. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Selby. Here. Commissioner Walker. Present. Commissioner Collins. Present. Commissioner Borland. I'm here. Commissioner Mann. Here. And Commissioner Birch. Okay, um, so it looks like we have um, six of seven members available and looking at the screen uh, that, that it believes we have six out of seven. So there is a quorum, quorum present and with uh, the mayor having called the meeting to order, it looks like we're prepared to move forward with the agenda. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Item number two on the agenda department had reports. So for the for the pub, uh, purpose of the public, the um, the department had reports are in writing. We won't read them out here over a conference call. Uh, folks who are interested in seeing the full report, full reports are directed to townofmanio.com, and under our under our governing tab they'll actually see agendas and the full agenda package under the under the board of commissioners is available um, in fact it has not just the agenda not has not just the agenda but also every staff report for for this meeting with nothing to, nothing there that for information only item number 3 public hearings now these are right now these are for information now um in, in order to move forward with this, uh, we we did solic we are soliciting public comment on this, but public comment could come in by by writing, or people on the phone can participate. And what we'll do first, if it's all if it's all right with with the presiding officer, Mr. Mayor, um, I will read uh, I will read for in anticipation of 3A, which is the Manio Small Business Emergency Fund. Um, I know we have to open this, open these public, open and close these public hearings with a motion. And if it's all right, I will then read, I will read the written feedback and then go to public comment, if that's all right, Mr. Mayor. All right. Uh, so, somebody make the motion that we uh, uh, take up the public hearing on the Manual Small Business Emergency Fund. I'd like to make a motion that we open public hearing for the small business relief fund and for the record that was commissioner walker yeah good okay and is there a second yeah. borland a second. all right so with motion second that we open the many of small business mercy fund public here and uh uh all in favor uh, aye. aye opposed the ayes have it all right go ahead thank james you. thank you mr mayor so um, in or we we have um, we have a number of attendees on the phone, but before we have the the, po the folks on the phone, um, I we did receive two comments uh, in writing uh, regarding this topic. So for, number one was feedback from a resident, and the, the quote is, quote, "I support this so long as it remains a legitimate loan that is paid back." Actually, the town should have had such a fund before this current economic panic. This should be called. The Manio Small Business Fund remove the emergency verbiage as we should not have to refer to this as an emergency to justify its creation. Consider it as a micro lending creation that fills many voids currently in place from the large lending institutions prior to the current situation. Long overdue. End quote. Uh, feedback number two. Uh, who was it signed by? It was signed by a, a resident. Um, Didn't give the name. 
Oh no, uh, I have the name. Uh, the name. I'm sorry. Um, the, uh, that was you know. You know. When we have public comment, they have to give their name and address. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you for for reminding me of that. Um, that that information came in from uh, a resident, uh, Mr. Douglas Backman. And um, let's see, we also have a second public comment now. Or this this one was part of a list of suggestions that were compiled by community member uh, BB Woody, and she received suggestions from folks. And this is what she submitted. It was actually a number of suggestions, but and the header for this reads. The town of Manio going forward suggestions. How can the town help our citizens and businesses through the coronavirus? Um, and then the section that was relevant to this proposed small business emergency fund reads, quote, loans may create a conflict of interest with other government loan slash funding programs. Also, loans have to be paid back, grants do not, end quote. Now, I should note for the record that this feedback arrived prior to the final draft of the program documents and we incorporated provisions that would eliminate any such conflicts or barriers, such as the use of UCC1 filings and allowing early payoff without penalty for those businesses who get funding from the SBA or other sources. Now, those were the only two written comments that uh, were received before this public hearing. Now I'm going to turn to, the, turn to my screen here. Right now we have 14 call-in listeners. So for the call, any call-in listener who desires to comment here at the public hearing, what you do is you raise your hand, and it, and I will uh, you, by, you raise your hand by type you, punching your phone star six, and when you hit star six, um, that will raise your hand on the computer screen, and we can unmute you. And what we'll do is we'll identify you by the last digits of your phone number, so that you can uh, you can identify yourself, your location, and and make any comment you might make on this public hearing. Hey James, this is uh this is I'm Jason. Sorry. Um, does does Wait. it make sense to uh um and, and sorry to talk over you here, but does it make sense to recap some of the details in terms of where money's coming from or, or those logistics before people comment on it or um are we are you gonna comment make some of those comments afterwards? Um I just wanna make sure that um those additional details are um shared to, to folks who have opinions on it. Uh, yeah, yes, sir, Commissioner, and uh, Mr. Mayor, if it's all right, I'll do my introductory comments on this topic now instead of on the new business item, if that's all right with you, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, go ahead. Yes, sir. So I'll give a short introduction for, for folks who are out there, and we're actually going to re redo the call for, for public hearing with a, a new command. So the, the in terms of the Manio Small Business Emergency Fund, coronavirus COVID-19 has impacted public health on an international scale, and the economic impacts are already being felt locally. Small businesses are particularly hard hit in the current environment, and these businesses and the jobs they provide make up the backbone of the local economy here in the town of Manio. North Carolina local governments are authorized to perform economic development activities, and in this case, the offering of emergency loans to small businesses. Um, what we have done is we have done a proper public notice, and we have, are proposing a program after getting in, information from the North, University of North Carolina School of Government. Carl? The, uh, the development finance initiative there at UNC, the here from around the James. state, okay. and legal counsel. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Um, we, we, um, we have, um, what we've done, we've tried to take some of this feedback and the, the eligibility parameters would be, need to be established, and here are the suggested ones. It's a small business, less, that is less than 50 employees, including the owner. It must have a physical location within town limits. It must have been in business for at least a year. It must be the primary occupation of the owner. That is not secondary employment or a gig or a gig job. Uh, it must have demonstrated impact from COVID-19. Now we structured it as, as basically intended to it will help two types of businesses, both of course small businesses, but for those businesses that are going after small business administration, disaster recovery loans, and other types of uh, federal funding. This loan can easily be paid. This can be a bridge loan to them where it takes care of their short term bills while the paperwork hassles are being worked out with the federal programs. And they then can pay those off with the proceeds of those lower interest loans. On the other hand, we also can structure it that we, for those people who aren't eligible for those loans or unable to get it, they can utilize this loan and have a long term repayment program so that they can get through the crisis. So a maximum amount will be $5,000. Uh, using an interest rate of 6% based on feedback we had from School of Government and Council, 
the example of someone who did it as a long-term loan would be, for example, year one, it would be a deferred payment. Now, interest would still accrue, but it would be $0 a month so they can get through the crisis and get through the season. Year two, they'd be taking an interest-only payment, and in this example, it would be $26.54 a month. Years three through 10 would be principal and interest, $69.76 a month. So there, they would, it would be intended. It is a loan. It cannot be a grant for state law. It has to be a loan and must and is to be paid back. We there is no penalty for early repayment, so they can participate in other loan programs. Uh, and there would not be a UCC one, or we would not, for example, do a UCC one filing on their inventory or uh, assets because that would that would hurt their ability to get other kinds of funding. Also, any owner with a 33% or larger share must sign as a co-borrower because these folks will be signing on loan and be responsible for repayment. Um, we've set this up so that it can be a quick hit loan. The goal, the goal would be that if, if, if it's approved uh, here on April 15th, we believe we can go through a full application review and process so that they, um, so that the, those checks, should they be eligible, uh, could be cut uh, by the end of the month in time for them to make their May 1st payment. Um, eligible expenses would include things like payroll, accounts payable, including town water bills, fixed debts, rent, et cetera. And of course, we can, uh, we can confer with each of these firms because if they may be in their own specific situation, we can provide additional advice and guidance. That's, that's a, a snapshot of the program itself. Um, are there questions from the board before we open it up for the, um, for the public? Public comment part of the hearing. This is uh, Commissioner Borland again. Did you mention the uh, uh, source of the funds? Thank you, Commissioner Borland. Yes, this is um, the, the this is proposed to come from the existing fund balance. So for the for the general public, we we often liken our fund balance to our rainy day fund. And these are funds that are set aside in case of emergencies, problems, hurricanes, whatever. I can't think of any rainier day than uh, this, this particular pandemic that has um, not been experienced in the last few generations. Uh, for, in terms of the, so in terms of the allocation, we're proposing an allocation of $100,000 to this, this Manio Small Business Emergency Fund. And as the board may recall from its budget, in general, fund balance is calculated annually. It's, you, you can't really track it on a going forward basis. But for comparison purpose, we had our, the, when we started this fiscal year, fiscal year 2019 2020, our fund balance was $4,184,853, which exceeded by three quarters of a million the minimum were required. Um, and this 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 particular allocation is just a small percentage of that available fund and also we have not we have not gone back to the board for any uh, additional uh, takes from the fund balance during this fiscal year so um, that money uh, that money that rainy day fund is available should you choose to make that appropriation in the next phase of this um, consideration this is commissioner walker um on the same line uh so so we can't figure what the percent i mean it would it wouldn't even reduce it by say a percent or a half percent if it's if we have the four million and this is a hundred thousand yes right now that that hundred thousand would calculate to around a little over two percent of our of our fund balance okay. And that's two percent of fund balance, which of course is only a percentage of our overall budget. Right. Okay. I just uh, my math was off. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Um, this is Commissioner Selby. Um, who will who will be doing administrative work or and reviewing the applications for these loans and keeping up with um, all that? Will that be done in house? Yes, yes, and yes, indeed, Commissioner Selby. It would be done in-house. Um, we we have seen some larger jurisdictions where they hire a third party, um, like a community community development foundation. Um, but unfortunately, our local one does not perform that kind of work. So we would do it in-house. Um, also, that would save money on administrative fees. Um, lastly, if assuming this gets if this got subscribed with loans ranging from twenty five hundred to five thousand dollars. 
it would only represent about the 20 to say tw somewhere between 20 and 25 loans would be the ex expectation and that can that is manageable in house okay 20 to 25 do we have more or more businesses than that? What happened if we go over? I don't even know how many of businesses that we have in Mania that, you know, would be eligible. Yes, that is, and that's great. We're as we work on our uh, on our on our database of businesses since we since 2015, since the state eliminated the privilege license, which would allow us to track those. But we we believe there are more more business there are more businesses than we would have available loans. So it isn't it's possible it would be it could be oversubscribed. Um, one of the things we did we mentioned in our staff report is to to, to try and figure a way to um, is, is to figure a way to prioritize making sure they not only meet the eligibility requirements but they all also the funds are used for business continuity that is keeping the doors open and job preservation and job retention because every job is precious here. And we want to make sure we give uh, the opportunity for local folks to have local jobs. Um, so um, in, in the event, we believe in the first tranche of money, if it's oversubscribed, uh, if there, it, that, then the board can decide whether, you know, make a decision uh, in terms of whether additional funding is needed. But right now, that seemed a, a, a prudent amount to appropriate. And that's why the recommendation was for 100000 $100, So it's possibility everybody who apply will not get that money. That's correct, and we have seen in uh, in other larger jurisdictions where it's oversubscribed. In fact, even at the state level, some of the programs like the Golden Leaf Foundation, um, they became oversubscribed with millions of dollars. Um, so I know that I know we can't really compare the state and federal programs to ours in terms of valuation, but doing what we can seems much better than doing nothing. And this it, this seemed like a, an appropriate first step. Um, but I, I would I would be encouraged to see what happens as we open up should should it be approved and applications are opened up to uh, eligible businesses. And who did you tell me will be reviewing the application and make, making the de determination? Uh, right now, that's at, that's at staff level since we don't have a third party entity doing that, and I'd be leading that effort. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Commissioner Burke. I hope y'all can hear me. I was I had some IT issues evidently. I'm not sure. Um, I, I have two questions, if y'all don't mind. Um, how are we going to ensure that these loans be paid back? I, I, I hate to say that. Absolutely, and thank you, Commissioner Burke. So, um, in, ter in, ter in, ter in terms of th it is this is a business loan, and it also has to be signed off, as mentioned earlier, not just by the, the applicant, but also any owner with a 33 percent or larger share. They must sign as co-borrowers. Um, in terms of, however, the, we had, as we saw, some, some organizations have considered the idea, for example, of attaching inventory or furnishing fixtures and equipment or things like that. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. when I looked at that, what I found was having those kind of attachments or, or, or um, those kind of filings out in the public records would make these same businesses not eligible for other types of either federal or commercial funding. So they wouldn't be able to get the, the larger money that we're just trying to bridge them to. Um, so, but it is still, there is still an expectation. They repay the principal and interest. And that's why for those that end up being not eligible for the bigger funding, having this long deferred payment, having the, having the payment program set up so that it defers during the crisis, goes into someone and gets them back on their feet and then has a longer term principal and interest. Surely someone can afford with running a business can afford $69 and 76 a month. I mean, that's like a phone bill. Um, and we've, we've heard right. anecdotally from other jurisdictions like the city of Fayetteville, where a, a similar a revolving loan fund, where it's almost a point of pride for these local businesses because they know they pay this back that goes back and can help other people. So um, we are hopeful that that is, that is the case, uh, but it, it will be set up with a traditional promissory note loan agreement. And of course the owners having to sign on board. Okay, thank you. Uh, I guess the second part of the question is, is anybody else in the county doing this as far as the other towns like Duck or Kitty Hawk in that area? No, sir. No, sir. And uh, to okay. the best of my knowledge, none of them have it on their, none of them had it on their agenda when I last checked. Not in Dare County. Other, are the jurisdictions in the state? Yes. Dare County, no. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So if um, it, hopefully that's enough, uh, that is a, a suitable explanation for, um, for the, in anticipation of hearing public comment. Um, I'm going back over to the attendee list and I see 
um, 15, 15 attendees here calling in. Um, I'm going to give you updated instructions. So in our case, in order to raise your hand, if you can hit star nine on your phone, not star six, star nine, and what it will do is it will raise your hand and we will be able to identify, we'll call you out the last four digits of your, of your, of your phone number. Um, and you can you know, state your name and your location and make your, make your comments here at this public hearing. We want to hear the voice of the public and the community. And this is an opportunity for folks to speak specifically on the Manio Small Business Emergency Fund. So Mr. Mayor, I know you can't see people raising. No, raising. and James, uh, you're in control here, and uh, but you're going to get them to get their name and address. Yes, sir. I will not listen to nobody that will not give a name. Yes, sir. Um, I am looking out. Um, so for second second call here, please hit star nine on your phone. It will raise a hand on our screen here. We've tested it out. Star nine, and your 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 hand will be raised. Okay, we have a hand raised, and this has the last four numerals on their phone number of 8834. I'm now going to um, um, hit the unmute button, and if, um, if you could uh, state your name and your location, um, we will go ahead and you are unmuted now. So the, if the phone number ending in 8834 could, um, could identify yourself, your name and your name and your address, and please feel free to give your comments here to, to the board. Hi, uh, this is Susan Henderson. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, my address is 614 Pirates Way. And I uh, wanted to ask two questions uh, regarding the topic that's being discussed. The first is since the uh, loan vetting of the applications is being done in-house, uh, what measures are being taken to avoid the appearance of conflict of interest by the people deciding on who gets loans and who doesn't? And then my second question is, uh, will the companies that end up getting loans, uh, will that list be made uh, public information or will it uh, not be? Um, and Mr. Mayor, if I may, for as as a point of order, I know in general for either whether it's public comment or public hearing, typically we we um, uh, don't just have question and answer back and forth. But if you think these are relevant, I can I can provide an update on these on these. Well, issues. we can, James, and I'm gonna let you do this for this lady. Uh, I think her questions are valid, but we can't set precedent and get started with answering all the questions because it would get us in a bind. You know our precedent before. We don't usually respond, but she asks questions. And f from now on, you should ask the person that we're not going to tell the person we're not going to be able to comment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so in, th in this particular case, uh, we the, the reason we had to do it house, we did not have an available, uh, an available C they call it CFDI, but it's our CDFI, Community Development uh, Finance Initiative. So we so we, we are obliged to do it in-house, but since I'm, I'm doing it and I'm, um, uh, I have already outlined in our in the staff report the various cri the various criteria by which these will be evaluated, and um, also the application reflects those the, those values, both the eligible the basic eligibility criteria as well as the criteria for <coughs> preservation of jobs and, and for the continuity of business and those related things. We we do have those in the staff report. They'll also they also we have a, a loan application set up where those are laid out. So any firm applying knows that it is knows that 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 information is there um, secondly the list of people so at the bottom of the loan application that is that is um, getting finished now it has at the bottom and I could I, I actually checked with um, I checked with the state the, the the applications themselves will be a matter of public record so the name of the people what they're asking for etc the only things that, that the statute says wouldn't be releasable are things like social security numbers, uh, driver's license, a copy of their ele electronic copy of their signature, only those types of personally identifiable things. But the actual applications are by statute public records and they will be open for, uh, open for viewing by the public. So that's another thing that leads to the transparency on this is the openness of both the application and the, ra and the rating of those applications. 
um, as, as, as it goes to the earlier part of the question. So, okay, uh, thank you. The, the only other comment I would have um, would be just in case of a conflict of interest or an association with a particular business or a friend that owns a business, I would just suggest uh, possibly having uh, some way for the primary to recuse themselves from the decision on the loan application and have a secondary review that uh, particular application. Uh, that's my only other comment on this topic and thank you for uh, taking my uh, call. Thank you so much for participating. Okay, let's see. We have now another hand raised and this has the last four digits of 7362. That's 7362. And I am going to now unmute and we'll look for the person to identify herself or himself and uh, address. And here, is, here we are unmuted. Um, hello, this is Gina Owens. I live at 603 Sir Walter Raleigh Street. Um, I have two questions, but it isn't about the applications that y'all were talking about. I wanted to ask about the COVID-19 and what the town has in place for getting mask and hand sanitizer to the people of the town, and especially the older people out at uh, Baytree. And my other question is about uh, the sidewalks on the south side of Sir Walter Raleigh Street, and has there been any progress on that? And the bumps in the road. I don't know how to, what those flower things, those bumps okay. Okay. are called. Great. Um, uh, let's see. I, uh, Mr. Mayor, I acknowledge technically these aren't part of the public hearing, and we can um, we can defer. There will be a report at the at the May meeting regarding Sir, uh, the the items on Sir Walter Raleigh, ranging from sidewalks to bump outs. So if we can defer that, to, yes, 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 ma'am. If we can defer that to the May meeting, because we'll have more feedback from the DOT on those items uh, as as planned for the May meeting, and uh, we can also uh, we'll do it. We can we can uh, contact the call the caller about some of the, our coordination with Dare County on some of the COVID nineteen those kind those kind of operations, and we can make separate contact on that as well if that's all right. Yes. Well. Thank you very much, and um, y'all be safe. Bye now. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so I'm looking at my screen, and um, we have 15 attendees now at our peak. We've had two two comments, and uh, I don't see any other hands being raised. So, um, oh, we got we've got a, we've got a, we got a late comer here, or, or I'm sorry, a late. Oh, we got two more hands raised. Here we here we go. Um, the, the first one, the first one coming up, last four digits are 6094. See the hand raised here. So if you could identify yourself and your address, I am about to unmute you. Hi, this is Kathy Martin. I live at 825 Pirates Way. And I lived on Roanoke Island for the last 30 years. I want to say I think this sounds like a great idea. And if uh, there are more businesses who actually qualify than the amount of money you have available that you consider um, uh, a week from now, two weeks from now, uh, increasing the amount of money because you have plenty in the um, uh, unspecified till in the back, whatever, uh, to uh, help out some of these small businesses who are going to be really hurting come this summer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And we have one last hand up. Now, now this particular hand has the last four digits of 1447. And we can identify and do the location. We are unmuted. Brendan Strom, 21 Spinnaker, Manio. Um, I would just like to say I, I believe that all small businesses in the entire county are affected. Uh, by COVID-19, and I just, I don't know how we can possibly select one small business over another to receive this financial aid. I mean, there are business owners that, that live in Manio, um, but their businesses 
might be physically located outside of Manio, even though they come to Manio and, and service inside. Um, you know, the construction industry folks that cut grass and keep house there. So they would be excluded from this loan, even though their tax money was being used, uh, you know, to, to support these loans. Um, and, and, you know, we've, we've also have to worry about, you know, default, um, how, how are we going to handle that? Uh, that? That's definitely a terrible public relations nightmare for the town to have to deal with default from a town business on, on a loan. You know, the federal government has, has loans and grants available, a number of them, um, that are specifically structured to get people through this virus. And, and I think that the state and the federal government are both better positioned to assist biz businesses. Um, I'm, I'm definitely opposed to the town jumping into this. Uh, we're, we're the only town that's even talking about it on the beach. Um, and, and if the town really has a surplus that they feel like um, it's necessary to give back to the business owners, then I would suggest the most equitable method would just do a, do a property tax refund. Um, that way everybody is, is um, helped out and that would be something as a grant, not as a loan that wouldn't have to be paid back. Um, I just, it's not fair to take taxpayer money from one business and give it to another when we're all hurting at this point. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. Okay. So as I'm looking at the screen, we still have 15 attendees, um, but I don't see any other hands raised. Uh, I guess we'll give it one last shot here. And I don't see I don't see any more, Mr. Mayor. Um, should all should right. The Let's call one time. We're going to call twice. We'll call once. Does anybody else like to be heard? It's online. Listen to us for public comment. Would anybody else love to be heard for public comment? All right, we're going to close the public comment period. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And if we could have um, from the board, if we could have a motion, second, and vote on the, to move the close the public hearing on the Manio Small Business. Yeah, okay. can we have a motion? I do want to uh, oh, go ahead. I want to just uh, provide a little more um, feedback that that I got as well, and I, I know in terms of conflict of interest having a business in town I did mention that I wouldn't be uh, voting on this um, I, I know the uh, there's a lot of um, federal and state stuff out there and it's um, it, I know it's the process is frustrating <laughs> and I'm living that firsthand um, I just to share my own experience we, we did get approved on our end um, um, for our disaster recovery piece so um, that's that's the first I've heard of anybody moving forward, um, but that is a sign that, that things are going to be moving forward. Um, it's also in terms of conflict of interest. I still won't vote on this, but but I wouldn't. We wouldn't need it um, with our business. Um, I did want to say just for the folks that aren't here uh, able to speak up, uh, the feedback I received from most folks was appreciative that we're that we're talking about this and we're trying to figure out ways to support uh, small businesses in our communities but was largely opposed to it um you know wanted to see what other ways we could uh um, spend money to support all our residents um but but that was the feedback that i that i hear um or that i heard and the folks that i reached out to and the folks that reached out to me was um you know there's all these other uh funds and things out there um, from federal and state level and, and you know is, is it really worth getting into so for better or worse that was just uh that was the the feedback i got all right uh congratulations uh jason for getting yours so early i you're the first one i've heard of been approved because the rest of them's in negotiation i do uh, compliment I you <laughs> you're lucky and you uh, thank goodness i'm glad you did well, that's I, like, I like. I, 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 know, I, I know people haven't gotten them, stuff, but hopefully it's coming. Okay, I know a lot of people have gotten them. I'm in business. Uh, well, this Commissioner like, Collins, this Commissioner Collins, uh, Jason, are you going to recuse yourself from voting on this topic? 
Yes, I, I'm, I'm going to use myself from voting on it. Okay. Do we need a motion for that? Yeah, yeah, uh, he'll have to. Uh, yeah, we're going to take a motion on him recusing himself from the vote. Let's go ahead and do it now and get it over with. How about that? Then he'll stay out of the conversation. You can't. I think we need to. Mr. Mayor, if I, I may. Think we need to. Yeah, don't we need to exit the public hearing first? They, uh, yes, yes. Uh, thank yeah, you, that's Mr. what Mayor. I thought, but go if, ahead. I've got a statement on recusal. So when we get to the new business for consideration of either of these two funds or, or both of these two funds, as we get to each of those agenda items where action will be taken, I've got a statement here on recusal and how the board can vote for recusing any party that may have a conflict, an actual conflict of interest. So for right now, if we can just close the public hearing and move that's on. That's what next. I was trying to do. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is Eddie Mann. I'll uh, make a motion to close public hearing for the Small Business Emergency Fund. All right, there's a motion to close the public hearing for the established Small Business Fund. Is there a second? This is Richie's second. All right, there's a motion uh, and a second to the uh, business concern. I'm not even going to read it. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Vote. I can't vote in hell. Uh, <laughs> all opposed, ayes have it. Motion carries. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Next up, next up on the agenda, this is item 3B. This again is a public hearing. Now the public hearing is for information purposes. Um, and is like we did last time, I was asked to give a brief up outline of this. So uh, just like the small businesses, residents, residents have been impacted in various ways by the coronavirus, the COVID-19 pandemic, and they've had economic effects such as job losses, uh, reductions in hours or additional expenses. Uh, these economic conditions may make it difficult for some residents to pay their water, pay their bills, including water and sewer charges. Uh, the Board of Commissioners led the public policy discussion when it suspended utility disconnections two weeks before the state's executive order. However, in accordance with the state's executive order, charges for water and sewer service will continue to accrue and the aggregate amount may be significant once the emergency declaration expires. Now, the Board of Commissioners at its last meeting directed staff to explore options for relief for residents on these utility bills. While state law prohibits a waiver or discounting of water charges for individuals out of a utility fund, however, the unit of local government may utilize its general fund for special programs, and the proposal in this case is to establish the Manual Resident Relief Fund to provide a limited block of funding to pay the water and sewer bills of town of Manual residents impacted economically by the current declared emergency. Um, the proposed program, um, following that feedback and that, 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 that leadership direction, the eligibility parameters that were suggested included, one, that the resident must reside within town limits, two, the location must be their primary residence, and three, they must have a demonstrated impact from COVID-19. Uh, the program is proposed to have a maximum value of $500 per household, which should yield up to several months of relief depending on household size. Now, these awards are grants, not loans. Awarded funds will not be paid by check to the applicant. Instead, they'll be paid directly to the Town of Manual Water and Sewer Funds on behalf of the applicant. This program is proposed to run during this declared emergency period and up to 90 days following expiration of the emergency declaration. And there will be an application process designed to document eligibility with program requirements while maintaining flexibility in how they demonstrate that impact. Now, this particular one also would be funded out of the fund balance. The proposal was for um, $100,000 out of the fund balance uh, for this resident relief program. Um, if there are questions from the board before opening, uh, before moving to open the public hearing, that, that, that's fine, or, or we can certainly provide update as we get to the new business consideration side, whatever, whatever the, uh, the, the will of the board is, Ms., uh, Mr. Mayor. Anybody? Yeah, this is um, Commissioner Shelby. Will the same process be used? Um, same in-house people reviewing the applications, like the small business applications. Um, uh, yeah, yes, uh, yes, Mayor Pro Tem Selby. In 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 this particular case, it would be done in-house. Uh, when we when we reached out to the foundation, they they um, actually. They don't. They don't do this type of thing, unlike some other areas where they they handle those, the the administration of that. However, one of the things we want to do is this. First of all, because we suspended disconnections, 
we have a little bit of time here to, to, to finish up any kind of an application since these connections are suspended during this emergency. But I, we, what we heard pretty, pretty clearly was we need to have some flexibility in how they demonstrate these impacts because each family may have, may have had different forms of impact um, and we also want to make sure um, that you know it's not just a job loss. Like I say, it could be a reduction of hours or other other unanticipated expenses incurred you know, as a result of this pandemic. So we want to make sure there's some some um, uh, appropriate flexibility there while still maintaining the limits of of each potential award. Mm -hmm. So this, this money is not really going back out because so it's coming right back to us. But we're just paying it for ourselves, right? This is Commissioner Collins. Yes, sir, Commissioner Collins. So, um, since since state law prohibits us taking uh, giving a uh, giving a like a, a discount or a, a direct relief out of the utility fund, they do allow it out of the general fund. But the general fund just has to pay the utility fund. But it's still it's what we're what we're trying to avoid in this particular case is not to just send a send a you know a, a check out there. Um, or, or whatever, it's it's much easier to do the transfer on their behalf, and that and that can be done. That can be done. It we, those funds are separated, and in fact, those funds are have have their own, have the audit process. Um, we, we, we know the enterprise fund versus our general fund, so that they, they, these are audit actions. And, and those funds are going to the board of selectmen, right? Yes, sir. Okay, that's good. Go ahead, James. All right. So in order to open the public hearing, we need a motion, second, and vote to open the public hearing on the proposed Manio Resident Relief Fund. All right. Can we have a have, go yes. ahead? Commissioner Selby, I'll make a motion that we open up the public hearing for the Manio Resident Relief Fund. All right, is there a second? Eddie Man, second. Second. All right. Thank you. All right, there's a motion to second. We open up a public hearing now. Comments for, I mean, uh, for the resident relief fund. All in favor? Uh, all right. Opposed? Right. Eyes have it. All right. So it, at this time, in terms of um, public comment, if it's all right, I will read, um, I'd like to read into the record the two comments that we've received on the resident relief fund. Um, first, is um, a, a feedback. Uh, this is from uh, from a resident. This is from um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Doug Backman, who had provided feedback earlier. And the quote is, "If this is proposed to be funded from tax dollars, then I am adamantly opposed. This is beyond a slippery slope. It duplicates existing governmental and private entities tasked with this responsibility and has the potential to confound those existing efforts. Now is not the time to be contemplating additional fees or taxation." End quote. The second feedback uh, was part of that list of suggestions compiled by community member B.B. Woody. Uh, the header reads, Town of Manio going forward suggestions, how the town can help our citizens and businesses through the coronavirus. In this case, the section relevant to the proposed Manio Resident Relief Fund indicates support for, quote, relief for utilities slash fees, water and sewer. So it was specific on this particular count. In this case, those are the only two written comments that I received uh, in anticipation of the public hearing. Um, and if it's all right, I can look at the our attendee list, our attendee list to see if we have any hands raised. So to remind our attendees to raise your hand to comment on the manual resident relief fund, hit star nine on your phone and it will raise your hand on our computer. And we do have a hand raised in this particular case. In this particular case, the last four digits of the phone number are eight eight three four. So I'm going to unmute and where our caller can I can identify and state name and location. We are we are unmuted. All right. Thank you. Uh Susan Henderson again, 614 Pirates Way. Um, I just wanted to say that I uh agree with the proposal to help out the residents with the utility bills. I just wanted to add um that if there is a mechanism within the uh state law to be able to have an appeals process to give them an additional three months of time to pay past the three month time period you're already proposing. Um, and uh, they could appeal for that and get maybe those 
payment spread out uh, through the end of the year or something like that. I think that that would be uh, another thing to add um, just for those that who may that may have more profound impact than others uh, and may have suffered a longer term job loss as a result of the pandemic and COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we have that. Okay. So that, that was our first hand ra hand raised, and I am looking at the screen right now. I don't have any other hands raised for uh, this for the Manual Resident Relief Fund. Uh, oh, we have another. We've got another hand that is uh, that has just been raised, and this one, the last four, the last four digits are one four four seven. And I will now unmute uh, so that a caller can identify a name and location and a comment. Uh, Brendan Strom, 21 Spinnaker. Um, everybody has been affected. All families with family members working in the private sector are financially affected by this. So I don't see how we can possibly select one household over another um, to receive this financial aid when, when we're all affected. Um, the state has programs that are very lenient and specifically designed for people affected by the virus to keep money rolling in. Um, the unemployment, uh, it, all the, the um, everything's been waived where you have to go look for, look for work. You're getting an extra $600 a week on, on top of um, your regular unemployment pay. Um, it's not counting against the businesses. So those that, that are unemployed, um, it may take some work to get through the system, but, but they're still going to, you know, receive unemployment pay. Um, you know, they've increased uh, the WIC program, you know, and they've also um, opened up the Medicaid program to people that are affected even short term by this. So, you know, taking one neighbor's tax money to pay another's water bill when, when we're all affected, I'm, I'm opposed to this strongly. Uh, thank you for hearing me. Thank you, Brad. Okay. Let's see, we have um, another hand raised and these, the last four, uh, the last four digits are four, five, nine, seven. Four, five, oops, four, five, nine, seven, and we are now unmuted. Hello, uh, Doug Backman on Lindsay Lane. I just want to reiterate on prior commentary. Uh, I agree with the previous uh, comments in that the, the federal government has just passed a two trillion plus uh, aid packet. It includes unemployment benefits that are in many cases uh, will allow you to draw more pay than you would if you were working. So if you agree, if you think you're going to do this and you end up doing it, I certainly hope that you're responsible enough to means test this because the benefits that are pouring from the feds are extremely generous. And uh, I, I just don't, I don't understand why we're doing this. And if you want to be equitable about this uh, in terms of water and sewer, you should just go ahead and waive water and sewer fees for the entire town, for everyone who's currently paying uh, in, until the COVID uh, situation is over or your money runs out. But uh, it's, I just don't think that the town needs to involve itself in this type of a welfare program when there are so many other benefits available. Uh, and I just want to uh, reiterate the previous comment. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Those were the only three hands that were raised so far. So if we have any new callers on, on the line, again, hit star, star nine to raise your hand and we, would, we can unmute you. And so far, I don't see any new hands up. Um, um, Ms. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if you'd like to do our, our three calls. Um, yeah, we, okay. Well, now's the time to be heard for public comment. Uh, is anyone else like to be heard? Would anybody else allowed to be heard? All right, we'll close public comment period, James. 
All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So as, as we go out of uh, go out of the, the this, this public hearing, we'll have a I, we'll look for a motion, a second, and a vote to exit the public hearing. All right, can we have a motion to exit the public hearing? As Eddie Mann, I make the motion to exit public hearing for the resident relief fund. All right, can we have a second? Four and second. All right, uh, the motion is second to close the resident relief fund. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed? Ayes have it. All right, we're now in public, we're in regular session, James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item number four on the agenda, this is public comment. Um, I, I know we've received a lot of public comments. I know those are a specific public hearing, but this item is for information. I'll, I'll read out the, the, the normal instructions and um, the, the members of the public are invited to address the Board of Commissioners on any topic. Public comment is not intended to require the Board to answer any impromptu questions or to take any action on items brought up during the public comment period. Speakers will address all the comments to the Board as a whole and not one individual commissioner. Discussions between speakers and members of the audience will not be allowed. Time limits are three minutes per person or five minutes per group. Please identify yourself and your location so that your statements can be recorded. So in this particular case, we don't need a motion to go into public comment. So I'll look up on the screen and see if any of our callers have, will raise their hands. Callers wanting public comment on general topics, uh, hit star nine and, we, and you will be recognized. Seeing none, um, uh, there we go. We've got, a, we've got a hand raised here and this is public comment. This will identify this first by the last four digits is 4640 and it's unmuted. Yes, caller, you're, you're unmuted now. And if you don't mind identifying yourself and lo your location and uh, you go ahead with your public comments. For the caller with last four digits on your phone number of 4640, your hand is raised. If you would like to go ahead and identify yourself, that'd be great. All right. Uh, um, caller is uh, four, four digits for your phone number are 4640. Your hand's raised. Uh, if you'd like to go ahead and speak, that would be great. Um, some phones have a function where it actually mutes, it actually you may have to turn off your own mute. Uh, I've seen that happen with certain certain phones as well. So, but on our phone call right now, you're unmuted and available to talk. Thanks, James. That was the case. My name's Tim Teeple. I live at 101 Fernando Street, and my topic is about the bump outs on Sir Walter Street uh, that was discussed about last meeting. Um, I was wondering if, um, just to be clear, um, those bump outs will be put in for the 20 year plan and it's both under the traffic and transportation about uh, restripping Sir Walter Riley Street on the West Main Highway and building sidewalks and installing plantings and lightings along the north side of the street. Not only is it mentioned on the traffic um, part of the 20 year plan, which DOT had to approve as well, but it is also located on the village aspect as well on page. 46 of your 20 year plan for the village neighborhoods and improvements where it says maintain and improve all roads and adding sidewalks and vegetation to the area and routes on the west side of Sir Walter as well. I would ask that since we are having a 20 year plan update board that is working hard on their information that that does get put in consideration when the board makes an opinion or changes the road and the bump outs of Sir Walter. And with that, I appreciate you, the public comment, and I hope everybody's staying safe as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Tim. All right, um, I'm looking on my screen here and um, that was the only hand that we had raised here. Uh, is, oh, we have a second hand raised and we have the last four digits on this phone number are 8834. And I'm going to go ahead and unmute caller 8834. Um, hello, Susan Henderson, 614 Pirates Way. Um, I want to just um, first off thank um, everyone, uh, the mayor, the board, 
uh, everyone involved in this hearing. It's been very informative, and I appreciate the format, uh, which is very unlike uh, some of the others I've been in um, in other jurisdictions, uh, just to see how it goes. This is my first one for Mantio uh, government. Um, if so, I just wanted to give you a compliment as to how you're running it. Um, that, that's number one. Number two, um, I just wanted to comment on the, um, uh, the non-resident homeowner uh, denial of entry uh, through DARE into Mantio. And I would, um, although understanding the steps that um, have been taken to protect residents, and the pandemic and understand all of that, I would also implore uh, the Mantio government officials to please also represent the tax paying non-residents um, who also contribute to the economy, pay taxes, um, and the fact that there's no uh, published exception or appeal process to the non-resident ban um, is very unfair and some may say because the pandemic, it doesn't have to be fair, but I think we all still live in the USA and we need to recognize that everybody has certain rights and privileges based on where they live and taxes that they pay. And I would appreciate uh, representation for all classes of home ownership in Mantio. And uh, that's my my final part of the comment. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. All right. So we had two public co two public comments here. I'm looking for any other raised hands, and um, right now I'm not seeing any. So any last comments? Star nine. Okay. All right. Yeah. Not we'll, seeing any other raised hands, sir. All right. We'll. Ask one more time about closing public comment. Any other comments? <clears throat> Any other comments? All right, James, we'll close the public comment period. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Next up on the agenda, item number item number five. This is new business. Items five A and five B are for action. However, before we get to these action items, uh, I'd like to read a, read a brief statement about recused about recusal should it be necessary for either five A or five B. Uh, according to the School of Go North Carolina School of Government, quote, state law creates an affirmative duty for local governing board members to vote on matters that come before the board, end quote. However, in the event of a conflict of interest, the North Carolina general statutes indicate a member, quote, may be excused from voting, end quote, on such matters. Absent any direction from the state, it would be prudent to have the board member request a recusal and the board should vote to confirm their will as to whether the member may be excused from voting. If the board desires to excuse the member, then that member will not be allowed to participate in the discussions of the matter, nor vote on the matter. Should you decide to proceed with allowing the recusal, then a motion, second, and vote would be needed at this time. Um, so as we participate, go to item, item five, new business, those two items are consideration of the Manio Small Business Emergency Fund, and the other one be the establishment of the Manio Resident Relief Fund. All right, I, I have a question for Jason. Uh, Jason, how about uh, on a new business B, uh, many a relief fund as far as the uh, water situation. How about that? Do you want to be involved or not? Yeah, I mean, I I, I think you can. I, I don't I, know why not. I, I, yeah, I mean, I've got no more conflict of interest than than anyone who lives in, in that's right. That one, so, yeah. So uh, I James, for, James, can't we do that? Back. Yes, sir. In fact, um, you, you can, the, the board can, as we go to each agenda item, just, can just say, so if okay, you okay. Yeah. small business, see if anybody needs recused for that one. Then we'll ask the same question at 5B on the resident you know, utility relief. Okay. okay. So I guess the question is, is there anybody? Uh, I, I, got, I got a problem here. Uh, we got five and six. With this situation, I'm going to ask that six be moved ahead of five because if we're going to uh, have the new business discussions and a vote, uh, we need to comment. We need opportunity to comment before we have the vote, I think. But what do you, what's the procedure on that, James? Um, if if it's related to the agenda item, it would be great to have it during during the agenda item. The the only problem, the only issue I see is that 
um, once a person is, you know, is recused, they, they oh, can't. Oh, okay. Yeah, I forgot can't. about recusal. I just want everybody to have a chance to be heard uh, during, before they vote. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ab ab absolutely. And I don't know for sure whether we have anybody want recusal, but I guess now would be the time for someone to, um, to, to specify should they choose. Let's go ahead and do that. I'd like to request uh, recusal on item 5A. Okay. Uh, so for the record, Commissioner Borland has requested the recusal from the consideration of the Small Business Emergency Fund. And if it's all right with you, Mr. Mayor, if we may ask the board to uh, uh, the board outside of Commissioner Borland to uh, motion second and vote as to whether to yeah. excuse him from the voting. Can we have uh, can we have a motion to excuse uh, Commissioner Borland from uh, item 5A? This uh, is Eddie Mann, and I'll. Uh, Make the motion to recuse Commissioner Borland from 5A. All right. Is there a second? <laughs> okay. The motion is second to uh, accede to uh, Commissioner Borland's request to be excused from uh, New Business 5A. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, Mr. Borland is excused from uh, 5A. Go ahead, James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So under 5A for the public, this is consideration of establishment of the Manio Small Business Emergency Fund and budget appropriation. If the board if the board chooses, we we've already had the staff report on this, but let me be clear on what, what would have to ha what would have to happen. So the Manio Small Business Emergency Fund, the program itself has been outlined along with eligibility criteria. It has been properly noticed in accordance with with state law in terms on the economic development. In accordance with uh, the general North Carolina General Statute 158-7.1, um, should should the board can should the board can uh, can decide to um, to approve this, they would not only have they would have to do a two part two motions. One would be to approve the budget amendment that would appropriate the funds from fund balance in the general fund, and then all, after the appropriation, then to authorize the town manager to implement the funds. However, um, just should the board uh, should the board not decide to move forward with this, there's you know there's no motion or second required. That would only be required should the board decide to a motion second and vote. Um, sh should the board not move decide not to move forward, then that wouldn't be necessary. And Mr. Mayor, I'll turn it back over to you. Should you? Uh, should All you right, we're before. going to open it up to discussion. Uh, who wants to start it off for 5A? This is Richie. I'll start it off. I'm the bad guy. Um, I really don't think the town needs to be in, in the banking business. This is how I see it. And there's really no means to recoup the money that we are going to invest in these small which I, you know, I am all for the same small business in Manio, but I don't think we need to be in the banking business or running money to the small businesses without a really uh, getting the money back it's, as, if, if you really put it that way. Maybe I'm just thinking out of, out of the block. I'm not sure. No, no. Anyone else? Um, this is Christine Walker. Um, I don't know about the banking business, but I feel like it is an investment in the town, if you want to put it that way, by helping the businesses stay in town, if that is like an investment um and this right. is not a for, this is not a forgivable loan i mean this clearly is meant to be paid back it's you know i mean it's five thousand dollars doesn't seem a lot to me um you know if it means someone going under and being here in the next month or two when things open back up hopefully um you know, I've not had anyone approach me. Well, I, ha I have had one person um, that said they were not in favor of it. Um, but other than that, I've not heard uh, of any, you know, any other besides the comments today. Um, you know, so I, I'm, I'm really either, either way. I mean, I would love to have it available, you know, for those businesses. I mean, we already had ones that were struggling and it, and it sounds like James has really, and the staff has really gone 
you know, over and above to, you know, for the qualifications and the application. It, it to me, it sounds, you know, pretty firm and, and, and strong um, as far as, you know, repaying. And I realize that there are other, uh, you know, grants and loans available and, you know, that this might just be a bridge loan until they get a loan and then they could pay it back. So I, you know, I can see both sides. Um, so it's, it's whatever the, you know, the rest of the board decides. Um, but I would love to be able to help the ones, again, that, you know, have shown that they've been in business. Um, they're just looking for, you know, a small amount to get, you know, to hold, you know, to keep them in there until they can get doing business again. That's just my thoughts on it. Okay, Christine, good. Uh, James. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't have a vote. I realize that. Am I, uh, should I comment if I'd like to or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As chief local elected official, absolutely, sir. All right. I'd like to put in my two cents. Uh, this is an admirable thought from James and his staff. Uh, and I can see where he's coming from, but I have to honestly say I agree with Richie, and I'm not putting Richie in the bond. I was going to say it and suggest it anyhow that I would be opposed to it because there's going to be a lot of avenues available out there for the small business. And the sooner the better, naturally. But uh, I just don't think we're the loaning and banking business, really, and uh, it's admirable. And I would not be against it, as Christine said. I'll go either way. But I prefer we not participate. Now, I would suggest that rather than establish a small business emergency fund, that we put money in a tourist bureau fund, not to the tourist bureau that we set up. We've, we've just appointed a PIO officer that she and James and our staff could put together a tourist package for Manio, get the people try, ready to come back in here when we open up. I think the money would be much better spent in a total package for tourism for Manio and just for Manio and maybe even run Oak Island, I don't know, but establish a fund that we could set up and... Uh, get people coming back to our area as soon as possible because everybody is hurting. There's not one single person. Everybody's hurting. Uh, so that's my two cents. I, I, I'd be opposed to it. Uh, go ahead. Anyone else? If I had a vote, go ahead. <laughs> this is uh, Eddie Mann, if, I, if you don't mind me commenting. I, uh, I, I'll be honest with the board. My opinion has evolved in the past week um i initially thought you know it's a great idea and i do think it's a great idea it's, a, it's an admirable idea uh to help businesses but i i do think it would be unfair for me to tell my neighbors that i'm going to take their tax money and give it to a a business um taken away from them to give to someone else basically so i my opinion has evolved on it um I do think that it would be better suited to help all businesses with that same amount of money instead of giving uh, one business some money and maybe the other person doesn't even qualify for it or maybe somebody else is paying for it. But if we could take that that same chunk of money, that $100,000, and uh, put into some kind of revolving fund, uh, like you mentioned, Mr. Mayor, to, to get people here when the town opens back up, um, I think we should we should throw down the gauntlet and really, really – campaign hard to get visitors to come back to Manio um, and not just this summer at the end of this summer or whenever it opens back up but but every summer from here on out we want people here visiting and spending their money all right um, anyone else yes this is um, Betty Selby I thought about this a long time and I have purposely contacted uh, five businesses to get their feedback and their opinion. And out of the five businesses I contact, only one was partially in favor of this loan. Um, I would say that you can build a community, a person, a business up by offering a loan or grant. But if it's not repaid, you can tear the relationship down too, you know. 
people intend to pay loans back, and I certainly know that they it's in good effort and that they do. But how do you decide who gets it? I, I mean, I know it's a process involved in um, applying for it and reviewing the application, but I'm certainly concerned about who get it, and I'm more concerned who, about who don't get it. So I would not be in favor of the loan at this time. However, I wish we'd take the money or take the time maybe to look at some local small business, um, what they got at COA, and maybe we can talk with them and get our small businesses some help as far as applying for the loan, what to do and what not to do. I think they need some, the businesses need some support that avenue getting their loan process, getting the application done, and get some systems, maybe to see a way with that. Okay, thank you, Betty. Is there anyone else? This is Commissioner Collins. Uh, small business in the town of Manny has already has it very hard. Um, and I would... You know, if you go to the western part of the state, and like in Plymouth and, and Williamston, most of those places are really, the towns are really closed down. The business is not, not, as, not as open as, and I, I would hate for us to have a situation like that in the town of Manny where the business is all closed up because of this pandemic uh, when they already had a hard time surviving. So I, I support this and I'll vote for this. Uh, and I think Jane did a real good job in preparing us uh, with all the details on it. All right. If I could, I found there one more thing is, I, I, it's not because of um, James and his staff not doing the work. They put the work in into it. They laid it out for us as detailed as possible. But as an elected official, I got to put my work in for the people and businesses as well. Okay. Uh, is anyone else like to be heard? This All is right. Commissioner. Hello, this is Commissioner Walker. Um, can I ask James maybe how many, um, if he's had um, businesses, you know, call into the town specifically for for this type of help? Sure. Yeah. I mean, how? Yeah, uh, yes, Commissioner Walker. So we, right now, what I what I was hearing from the 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 bit, well, the few businesses that I could we could talk to now in the current environment, um, we were uh -huh. we were hearing a general desire to see what help they could get from the town. However, um, I believe that what I was what I was also hearing is there was some question as to would this pro would this program even be offered because um, I think it was alluded to earlier. Nobody else in Dare County is doing it. Uh, it's being it's being either put together or already offered in other parts of the state, but not here locally. So I think there was some question as to whether this program would even get off the ground. Um, but w w the feedback I did hear is if it did get off the ground, it was important that um, we that the loan be structured in such a way that if they got the SBA financing, um, that they that this could then be paid off. It wouldn't have you know like it wouldn't collateralize their real estate or anything like that. It needed to be. I need to be set up so they could just be be a bridge loan, um, as, as was mentioned earlier. Um, I have heard from some businesses who have expressed their um, inability to get the SBA financing despite having existing lending relationships and it's still waiting. Uh, my own brother has a, had, had existing relationships and multiple restaurants and continues to, the system crashed on him three times and now they're just waiting in the queue. But I was highly encouraged uh, that Commissioner Borland reports today that his paperwork has been approved and presumably they're in the process of cutting a check. So I am deeply encouraged by that, which um, um, uh, that, that's, that's the first bit of good news I've heard on that front uh, in, in, the, in the last week. All right. Was anybody else, by, does that satisfy you, Christine? Yeah. I mean, I just, you know, my initial thought was that there probably would not be um, that that would apply uh, and i'm just wondering you know after going you know 
if if it is, you know, like you say, indeed worth it um, to do it. Um, but um, just, you know, if, if it's something that we could address, I mean, I'm just curious to know, like, if there's going to be twenty businesses or if there's going to be two, um, you know, and I just, I do, I want to help the ones that need help. Again, it's not, we're not talking a large figure. Um, and I just, you know, again, it's not, this is not free money. It, it, this is a loan. I mean, there will, there's going to be interest charged. So I just, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm hating it. I'm just hating it for the businesses right now. I just, you know, I want to be able to help if we can. And, you know, but I, but I am, you know, curious as to how many would actually apply. Um, And I know there's no way of knowing that, but that's just, you know, like I said, it, if I, I wish that we could fulfill, I mean, I, I just want to be able to help them if, if we can at all. All right. Well, Mr. Commissioner Collins, uh, from the, the limited number of comments that we had on, on this uh, topic, uh, most of the people who commented are uh, agree that this is a good idea, and we should do all we. Now I don't. Can. I don't agree with you, Daryl. I've had five people against personally talking to me, call. so I don't know well, who talked to who. All then, the people who commented. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah. I agree with you on that. All right, we have before us consideration established of the Mayo Small Business Emergency Fund. I'm going to call for a. Am I, am I in good shape, James, to call for a motion? Hold yeah. on, I got one question. Wait a minute. Can I? All right, go ahead. Question? Go ahead, yeah. So, 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 James, is no other relief as far as utilities or, or taxes or anything like that? I think a um, caller did mention that. Is there any other relief, like I said, to utilities or taxes or anything like that? Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor Patem Selby. So um, let me let me break that down into two parts. So um, utilities versus taxes. So in terms of utilities, um, in, ter in terms of utilities, what we what item five B on the agenda talks about. <clears throat> Um, utility relief for residents. It does not talk about utility relief for for businesses. Um, however, however, what I what I can say is that the board has already authorized author, already authorized us to do um, payment plans. When, once we get out of this emergency, they've authorized us to do payment plans for both businesses and residents. So if we get to that situation where a business is having a hard time paying its water bill. Uh, and we can demonstrate the impact from COVID-19, we have the ability to stretch that out in some payments. So, um, so on the utility side, I think we have a path forward for folks on those, those, those utility bills. Um, the second half though, in terms of tax relief, uh, I conferred with the state, conferred with council. We, we don't have, I conferred with the county. Uh, honestly, I was the first person I called and uh, we don't have the ability to offer tax relief or tax rebate or a deferral or anything like that there's no statutory authority for us to make that kind of a make that make that kind of a, of a thing whether for residents businesses or any any individual or, or class of, of individuals so utility okay, yes. okay. That, that to the yield it's utility so what you're saying is you can stretch it out which is going to add to the um the bill but you can't give any discount or relief. Is that yes or no? Um, the uh, in, in we're talking. Are we talking about businesses still? Yeah, we start talking about businesses. Just yeah, we're yes still on no. the business situation now. Yes, yes. Okay, yes, I just want to make sure. On, uh -huh. on, the, on the business on the business side, right now, there's we on from the enterprise from some utility fund, we can't give anybody a discharge or or, or 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 waive their fee or anything like that but from the general fund if we set up like with a resident fund if we set up like with the 5b would propose a fund to help residents that have been impacted um you know certainly the board can send that to business relief as well 
Um, but um, that wasn't what I heard from the dais from two weeks ago, but that's, that's the will of the board. Um, the one thing that I, that I know that we already have the, the ability to do is that, that extended payment plan and we'll make sure to, um, to work with any businesses in that situation as well as uh, any resident in that situation. So I'm assuming it's not a yes or no answer. Yes, in terms of payment plans, absolutely yes. Um, if you, but if, we, if you go to the grant side, it would have to be structured like 5B where there's an appropriation out of, out of, out of general fund, out of fund balance, and there's a process by which, um, by which. But well, now uh, we're just discussing 5A now. You're jumping over to 5B all the time, James. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry. It was, it, the, the, the question was addressing the, the utilities, so that's why I was trying that's to right. make, make yeah. a distinction. So in, if, in, terms of five, in terms of 5A, the funds from the loans could have been used for utilities or rent or, or, pay, or payroll, especially keeping people paid. That's so important. Um, but if it doesn't get passed, we can move on to the utility issue um, at this, at, if, that's, if that's appropriate. Anything else, Betty? <coughs> Betty, I think he's trying to answer your question, and I believe it's, it's going to be. Uh, I think he's telling you he's, there's room for. Uh, well, relief, well, I mean, relief yes, to the I mean, utilities. Maybe. What are you saying, James? Go through it again. So, the only thing I want to know, Mayor, if I'll be if you, Mayor, and to James, I just asked a question that I thought was uh, yes or no. I haven't got that, and that's fine because evidently, you know, maybe we can't. And if the question is, is there any other any relief for utilities for business, maybe for the water bill, is, is that a yes possible or no? James? I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about giving them eighteen months to pay it, extending the payment. I'm not talking about that. I just want yes possibly or no, or we can't do it. That's that's. Oh, oh ye yes, and yes, and we would ha we could do it just like 5B for residents. You could choose to direct us to do the same thing for businesses, a similar fund, and we would be happy to bring that back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate the clarification. That was super helpful to me. Uh, all right. Going back, we'll got consideration established. Many a small business emergency fund. Will uh, will somebody make the motion? Oh, wait a minute. Let me see how we're going to do this now. Yes, Mr. all in all in uh, uh, call for a motion of establishment of the small business emergency fund. Is that right, James? I'm close. Y yes, sir. And 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 if if a motion is made, I just want to be pretty accurate on this. Yes, sir. If if they choose to make a motion, they would first do do a motion yeah. to approve the budget for appropriation. Yeah. However, if no motion is made, it dies for lack of a motion, or the motion dies for All lack right. of a second. All right, we'll call for the motion. All in favor of the Small Business Emergency Fund, say aye. Raise well, your hand. Uh, oh, this is Mr. Tyler. Yeah. I'll make the motion to approve the budget amendment to appropriate $100,000 for the fund balance in the general fund to establish the Manian Small Business Emergency Fund for the purpose of economic development. All right, there's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. This is Commissioner. All right, there's been a motion and a second to the establishment of the Manian Small Business Emergency Fund. All in favor, say aye. Raise your hand so James can get the report. Oh, Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind, unfortunately, my computer won't show the hand raised from the panel. So if it's all right, I'll, I can we'll, we can do a roll call so the town. Clerk okay, can... that's good. That's even better. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so we'll we'll go ahead and um, and do and do the roll call. We'll um, we'll work our way uh, from uh, so Commissioner Walker, um, your your vote on the motion as it, as it stands. Yes, I seconded the motion, so I am in favor. Okay, Commissioner Walker is an aye. Commissioner Borland? It is a self. Oh, I'm, uh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Commissioner Borland, thank you for not responding. Uh, you, you, were, you, 
<laughs> uh, Commissioner Burke. Nay. Commissioner Burke is a nay. Uh, Commissioner Mann. Nay. Okay. Commissioner Collins. I'm for it. Aye. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem uh, Selby. Nay. Okay. Yeah. So we have uh so it's three to three to two. Um it's not a split vote, so the mayor doesn't need to vote to break a tie since there's not a tie. So the um the motion uh the motion the motion fails. Um and um the, and Ms. and as a point of order, Mr. Mayor, it because because the appropriate because the establishment of the of the, of the funding uh is 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 not is successfully met the vote then it, it, it appears unnecessary to have any kind of a motion on the authorizing the implementation of it since right. there's no appropriation okay so, all right the the vote was what three to two jay uh, yes sir three yes, to sir. two uh, against the uh uh, five A consideration established may a small business uh, emergency fund. Uh, the motion is defeated. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So item five B on the agenda. This is new new business. This is consideration of the establishment of the Manio Resident Relief Fund and budget appropriation. Prior to uh, prior to um, working through this agenda item, we would probably want to go ahead and call for any anybody who chooses to recuse them, themselves from this. Should um, should speak now, and then the board can go through the same process. All right. Is there anyone who would like to be recused from 5B consideration established May relief fund? This is Commissioner Walker. I would um, like to recuse myself. I am presently out of work. Mm -hmm. Well, that that's her request. Uh, oh, uh, go ahead, James. Please forgive me, Mr. Mayor. We I know we're going through the recusal for 5B, but in a uh, a point of order has been brought to my attention. Um, we have Commissioner Borland was was excused from participating in 5A, but now that we've moved on um, from 5A to 5B, if if you don't mind may we have the board vote to um, bring them back into the session oh yeah okay uh, Sorry about that. can we have a motion that we have a need for commissioner borland to uh establish his voting uh requirement on the many resident relief fund all in this favor i made the motion yeah okay is there a second okay Eddie, man, second. all right motion seconded uh Commissioner Borland be uh, considered an eligible to vote on uh, item 5B. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Wait, did he? Uh, did he's eligible? Oh, oh yes. wait a minute. Aye. Yep, we're we're just bringing him out of being recused from being recused so that he can come back in in time for 5B. Okay. And so I I think the, as the mayor as the mayor call, uh, mayor is calling a vote for this after. Yeah. The vote. All in favor? Say aye. Uh, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay. All right. We have consideration 5B. Uh, Mr. Uh, Walker, go ahead. Yes, somebody, sir. somebody wants to say something. I thought somebody broke oh, in. This is Commissioner Collins. Can I uh, make a motion to recuse uh, Commissioner Walker from item B, uh, 5B? All right, there's a second. This is Richie's second. All right, there's a motion second that we excuse uh, Commissioner Walker from consideration and voting on 5B. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, Ms. Walker is excused from voting. Great. Thank you. Okay, James. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So item 5B is the consideration of the manual resident relief fund and the budget appropriation. Um, it, this is, uh, in this case, it is a, we have, this, the board has had general discussion and public hearing um, in accordance with the protocol. Um, at this point, this one would also require two separate motions in order to proceed. Um, the first one would need to actually approve a budget appropriation. Uh, the original the original discussion was to have an appropriation of $100,000 from the fund balance, um, and that would have been part of the proposed budget amendment number two. 
However, given that the given that the Manu Small Business Emergency Fund uh, did not did not pass, uh, anybody who chooses to make this motion on the resident relief fund, should it get a motion, um, would need to modify the motion to say. Uh, approving budget amendment number two modified only to appropriate $100,000 for the utility re resident relief fund. All right. All right, let's open it up for discussion. Oh, we gotta have the, what? The, have we gotta have the motion first, James? If, if, yeah, if, if you'd like having the motion the second and the opening the discussion is, would be great if that's, if that's the choice of the board. Uh, yeah, that's all right. If the board don't object to it. Uh, wait a minute, I'm still confused. If why approve why approve this budget if it if, if it gets voted down? Yeah, and that, that that in fact would tell us whether the board wants to do it or not. So but then then you have the motion to vote on it before you then you make another one for appropriation, don't you or not? In our case, we just had the appropriation first, but you're right. If you want to authorize the implementation of it. Well, there's no, bit, no point in raising the money unless it passes. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. We can do it in that order. That makes that makes good sense. All right. Let's have discussion on the consideration of uh, the Manny Resident Relief Fund. Open it up. Go ahead. Someone start it off on 5B. This, this is Eddie, man. Uh, James, maybe you can research this while other people talk, but uh, I'd like to know what the total. Uh, monthly utility bills for sewer and water are um, for the entire town, residents, businesses, everybody, what what the town takes in monthly. All right, great. We'll, we'll get on that while the conversation continues. Thank, thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Approximately how many, how many residents would fall on this residence relief? Um, is this Betty? Yes, this is Betty. Okay. How many residents are we talking? And is it a number? I mean, I guess until the hundred thousand is going right. Oh, um, yes, <laughs> yes, Mayor. I'll, um, I'll address um, Mayor Potem Selby's question. Um, we we are working on uh, Commissioner Mann's question. Or the, the finance director is working on that. Uh, in terms of the number of residents, while there, an exact number can't be given, I can, I can, we can work back through some of the logic. So in the staff report, it talked about a maximum allowance of 500 per household, and the, the, that was there were a number of ways to calculate this. But an example that was given was a family of a family of four. Um, is okay. we, were seeing, we were seeing values out there of between 100 and 125 dollars per month. So we felt that would get households of varying size several months to at least get through the get through the crisis now if if all applicants got the maximum value that would allow up to 200 households uh to get that relief if some people didn't need it less than that of course then the number of households would go up but that would be that would be a min at least a minimum number of households 200 households out of the town are you answering uh, eddie uh eddie's question right now james uh, I was answering uh, um, Mayor Pro Tem Selby's question uh, in, in terms of the number of households that would be that could be served by this, and we're working on, and the finance director is working on Commissioner Mann's question about the total sewer and water per month. All right. Thank you. Uh, I guess we could continue discussion until we have that question answered, because I don't know how long it's going to take. I guess this is rich. I guess my fear on this matter is if we're waiving a $500 per household per customer, how is that going to affect on the maintenance and repairs of the, of the aging system that we have in case something does happen? And I know from my experience that a water or sewer leak can exceed $100,000 just in one shot. Yes, Mr. Mayor, if I may address yeah. Mr. Burke's question. Um, in this particular case, one of the things, because state law prohibits us from taking the money out of the water and sewer fund um, for a program like this, um, it's, it would be coming out of the fund balance in the general fund. Um, in terms of, in, in terms of um, potential delinquencies for folks who are truly impacted by this and would end up being a, an uncollectible debt or, or, um, or a default on their water bill, um, it 
from a policy standpoint, if our backup plan is to have it pay, if to have it paid out of this fund, out of general fund, so that that money goes to the water and sewer fund or our enterprise fund, at least that mo that money is coming in there. Um, but thank you. If we're we're having um we've we've got um, um some some data some data here from our. Uh, uh, that would also would also go then so you can so we can also talk about the order of magnitude here so um go ahead and this, and this goes and this goes back to commissioner Mann's question so the finance director has has quickly brought up our march month our march monthly statement included billed thirty one thousand two hundred dollars and fifty one cents for water forty six thousand eight hundred nineteen dollars and thirty six cents for sewer for a total monthly billing of seventy eight thousand nineteen dollars wow. eighty seven cents um, the and and then the it's it on the and the court they she also did a a quarterly average. Um, it's actually so over the quarter it was actually a slightly lower number, fifty four thousand nine thirty six, and presumably that's because we were in the winter months. Since obviously we see we well in the past we would have seen higher monthly higher monthlies in the summer. Although this particular summer we may see we we expect to see revenues down across the water and the, the water and sewer fund. Wow, that's expensive. Yeah. Well, this is Commissioner Collins. Um, the hundred thousand dollars is coming from uh, the fund balance from the general fund, but the money is being paid to the water and sewer. So this is like, even though they're getting free water, but this is like we're giving water and sewer a hundred thousand uh, dollar budget amendment to give them money, but so the, the money is really not going anywhere. It's coming right back to us. Okay. All right. Uh, anyone else like to comment? Well, I, I, I'd like to find some relief for the people that really need it. I don't know how we're going to do it to be fair. But that's, I guess, it's board decision, so that's what it'll be. But uh, we're talking a lot of money on water to sewer on a month. And, we're, was, and we, we're not, this is, I think she gave you the figures for March, James? Yes, sir. And then she had done a, a quarterly average over the, over the, over the, over the three-month period, which was slightly less than the March monthly. The March monthly at 78000 and the three-month rolling average at just under 55000 but it's it's still a it's still a significant amount of money in uh, in res, in response to the. It is on a monthly basis. We're talking three months, isn't it? What you're talking? It was on a. It was just that was the monthly the monthly average. Yeah. Yes. But you're talking about relief for three months, or you you haven't discussed that, have you? It would yeah. It would depend on the household. The, the we the 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 proposed cap of five hundred dollars per household could vary for like for a typical family of four that would have got them four or five months for you know a family of two or, or a single person that would get them more relief um and you know so so it's 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 hard to know what each individual family might have and we even we even hear reports that some folks are maybe having some higher consumption on a residential basis because for example the, you know the kids are home from school and um, you know, the family is, many of the families are in, under the stay at home order. So some folks may have higher than usual bills uh, during the current, the, during the current uh, governor's order. Hmm. This is Richard. I have one last question. Um, the Dare County water bill, does that come out of the, the general fund account? Um, the, the, um, yeah, yes, commissioner, the, the, um, the, the raw water we pay for from Dare County comes out of the out of the water and sewer fund, not the general fund. Oh, okay, the water and we, sewer fund. Okay, we definitely account for that separately as an enterprise fund, um, in accordance with the with the general statute. So we we it's not only is it separated, um, but it, it also has, of course, it it is it is audited as well. And the sewer costs also come out of the water and sewer fund, correct? Like the um. The treatment, the treatment of the sewer system, that comes out of the water and sewer fund, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They, okay. yeah, the water and sewer fund would handle both the water and uh, and the way and the wastewater. Okay. 
Thank you. James, I know you've done calculation on this. In your opinion, maybe you can't answer it, and I don't want to put you in a box if you <laughs> just mull over it a little while. In your opinion, what could this cost us? Now, Daryl says we're transferring one fund to the other fund, so it balances out. And I don't see it that way, but because then you take, if you take away from the water fund, we're still, even though it's a separate entity, I guess, it's, it's still, let's figure on the water budget, water fund. How much money are we really talking um, overall, in your think, opinion? Well, the, the water and sewer fund, in effect, is made whole against the potential delinquencies or defaults um, by, by, the, by the residents who, who otherwise are seek, who may seek relief. Um, interestingly enough, um, I know this was this was a, a, a big topic with the board at its at its last meeting. And if unlike the the um, the small business fund, which was a quick hitting thing, right now the town of Manio does has suspended the disconnection of utilities. And if 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 we want to gather some more you know some more some more data or, ha or go through a different what if scenarios, this one is not something that has to be passed this meeting if you choose to table well, it. Well, but we you know the Manio business don't use near as much water does it as as a residence because it's usually they're required to have one bathroom in each uh, business that's required law i think and people very seldom go in the bathroom now everybody don't wash their hands and use it for other purposes in businesses as they do the residences so am i right or wrong there's there interesting you're, you're right that there's some there's some some big uh, variability in the in the in the commercial in the uh, restaurant in the restaurant part of it sandwich right. shops and things like that but the, you know, say the bookstore mm -hmm. right i'm very, not picking that out but let's just say that how many people would use the bathroom in a given day i wonder not many Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Especially some of the small businesses, they do not have. Well, the most use. of them don't let you use the restroom. They got signs up front that says uh, "not for public use." Understood. Just a thought. This, this commercial Collins, uh, this this is just for many residents, not businesses. Okay. Okay. You're right. I'm sorry. It. It sounds like, you know, more information. It, you hate to keep putting things off, but it, you know, being that we've suspended um, uh, cutoffs and things, does that include late fees as well? Yes, yeah. yes, Commissioner. Yeah. Right now, right now, uh, late fees, interest penalties, and disconnections are suspended, um, and the and the, that would so so for right now uh, that. That, that that's buying some time for some of these some of these folks but and, and but the charges the charges for the water do continue to accrue right. because as as um um as uh, as an indirect reference to commissioner burke's comment earlier we we do buy raw, our raw water from the county as part of that that uh, that prior agreement so the town is actually paying for every gallon coming in um so that's that's that you know, that's that's another that's another factor to consider yeah I'm I'm having a, a a tough time personally. Not sure. You know, I, I think um, as with you know what we've been talking about for the past hour, it's uh, um, the intent is all there, and, we, and everyone's trying to figure out how we can take care of uh, everyone as best we can with um, everything going on. Um, I think it's just the impact, and is this the right way? Um, to do it that um, I'm struggling with and I, I, I take Daryl's point you know we're, we're shifting an allocation of funds uh, is one way to look at it um, but you know it it is coming from somewhere as well so um, we're really just pushing it around um, so I, I don't I don't know I'm, I'm I'm wondering if we table it until the uh, um, you know Two weeks till next meeting or three weeks, I guess. But um, yeah, I'm just having I'm 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 bouncing back and forth on this one. All right, uh, uh, it's Eddie Man. I have an, I have another comment. Um, so what? Uh, just trying to snowball ways to help 
um, everybody that would help residents and everybody in town, even even businesses. I know this is resident specific, but um, if there was a way to project um, what we believe water revenues would be in t from May 1st to say September 1st and come up with a number that would cover all water bills, which I'm guessing would be around $200,000 if 55 is the average. Um, but something to affect everybody because everybody is hurting right now, not just businesses, but residents, um, everyone, everyone's affected in some way or another. And we need to figure out a way to help everybody and not just, uh, not just 200 households, but we, we've got about 1500 people that live here that, that need help. I think Eddie's got a good, good, I don't know how we're going to get there unless somebody could come up with a motion or James could help us that we could help people in relief of just say from May to, well, what'd you say, September? September 1st, yeah. Yeah, September 1st. And, and what do you think it would cost? Because then we could, I mean, we could just say we could, well, I don't know. This bill refers to residents. I don't know how it would include businesses. Well, if, Mr. Mayor, if I may. Um, yeah. If, yeah. Go ahead. Um, we what we can do is, given the given that um, this um, these scenarios, what we can do is between now and you know, again, we have some some time here to come up with a program. And I think having the having the public hearing, the public comment, and the and this additional board direction is helpful where we can actually take a look at what are the scenarios with with residents, what are the scenarios with businesses. All right, go ahead, I'm sorry, and, go ahead. And then we could come back to you um, at the, at the maybe, I, we've got a very full agenda on, on the on May 6th. However, um, we, we could buy ourselves a little bit of time since we're in that suspension of disconnections and maybe the mid-, mid All right, James, if we brought it up May the 6th, put it on the agenda, Mm -hmm. Could we make, uh, if it were to pass, make it retroactive? Oh yeah, uh, yes sir. Yeah, we we've, we've got any number of ways to structure that. So we'll 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 find out how to structure it retroactive. Resident. Well, how how would the board feel about that then? That we just table this uh, five B until May the six and let James the staff come up with some kind of recommendation because he's heard from just about all of us. How'd the board feel about that? I'm with you. Uh, uh, all right with me. But could, could I see how much, how much, how much, how many, how many gallons of water does a hundred thousand dollars buy? Okay, maybe. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's, that's a good question. One I do not have in front of me, especially considering we, we have the combined water and sewer bills here. But we will we will get that in, we'll get that information. Yeah, we could have the whole packet ahead of us, May the six. We'll we'll get we'll add that to, we'll add that to the list. And to James's point, is, is this better served moving to the May workshop meeting rather than May six? Well, that would be up to what? That would be up to the board. What's the date on the uh, the May workshop meeting? That would be May May twentieth. The the, the May official 20th. the first meeting is on the sixth, and then we've got the twentieth. Let's do it on the sixth. That's the question. All right. Can hear some some other board members. I think we should move it um, to May 6th. This is Betty. Okay. Anybody else? May 6th is fine, Ms. Eddie. Um, just a question. To, uh, would this public hearing, would that cover, cover it if a motion was made for the 6th? Or will we have to do a second public hearing? Um, yes, Mr. Uh, uh, Commissioner, uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Mandy, um, this we we are we are satisfied in terms of any public hearing. In fact, um, the our discussion of this today um, was actually brought into two public hearings because the small business emergency fund, because it was under economic development, required a notice public hearing. Um, the resident relief fund technically didn't have a need need a public hearing in terms of that statute, but it was best because they're both funds. They're both coming out of the general fund. 
we, we thought it was more transparent to have a hearing for both. So we have satisfied that requirement or that protocol. And on May 6th, the board could put this what? under old business and take action as it deems appropriate then. Why can't we, yeah, why can't we leave it like that and, and no need for a public comment period and just have uh, put it under consideration on uh, May the 6th while I'm here and so far? Yes, sir. Or follow discussion. If we have some more of that information, um, is it possible to make that, um, I guess, public before the May 6th meeting, just so if there is any you know, and anything crazy changes, people have an opportunity to speak on regular public comment. Um, yes, Mr. I'll address uh, Commissioner Borland's question. So what we would, what we would like, what we could do in that point in terms of the agenda, which I know the mayor proposes the agenda, but first we could have the agenda, the agenda package would include that information, that staff report on Friday, May 1st, in anticipation of the May 6th meeting. And then the agenda itself, should the mayor uh, should the mayor uh, uh, allow us, would be to uh, put public comment. Public comment would be before this item, which would be listed under old business after public comment. So you'd still hear public comment on this topic. Yeah. This is Commissioner Walker. Since there's not going to be a vote, can I ask to be brought back in? I, I'd like to be able to discuss. We'll have we'll have to have a vote letter back in, and I think we should. Isn't uh, that right, James? Um, um, actually, if I'm if I may, if, as as a as a point of order, uh, the recusal. Any discussion any discussion on this topic would. But uh, yeah, now you're was, now you're changing the you're changing the whole topic now from. A resident must live in the town and they must have a demonstrated impact from the COVID-19. Y'all are saying y'all are going to give it to everyone, businesses and residents. And if that's the case, then I can be brought back in to discuss. I think she's right, James, but I'm going to have to get a, a formal opinion from somebody else I don't know. And I'm trying to do the right thing. I, I think I've got a mechanism that will make this work. So if if the board is choosing to table to table the uh, um, what was what was in the staff report, so if a motion, a second, and a vote to table that comes forward, then vote to bring a Commissioner Walker out of recusal and have those and those comments can certainly come uh, come either now or at the next agenda item, which is Mayor and Commissioner comments. And that'd be a great way to hear that and make that voice have, allow that voice to be heard. With, uh, if that's all right with you, Mr. Mayor, and, and oh, I don't want to deprive anyone. I'm trying to be as fair as possible. Yes, I think that's a great way for for the commissioner's voice to be heard um, in on this on a gen, on the general related topic. Is is that okay with you, Mr. Mayor? And you? Yes, talk? yes. Okay, so it, if we if we do that, if if you could if a, a motion could be made to to table the um, the Manio Resident Relief Fund. Um, and you know, motion vote and second on that. That gets us away from that that item, and then um, the then the vote to bring Commissioner Walker out of being recused. I think. Why can't we include it in, in one vote? Would, um, yeah, Mr. Mayor, you could. I just thought it'd be cleaner for the for the for the record to make sure. Oh, I don't care it. about clean. I just want it to be fair and equitable and expeditious. Yes, sir. I'll, if, I'll make a motion to uh, table the uh, economic relief for residents and to bring Commissioner Walker um, back in. Good. Is there a second? Second. second. Uh, the right. motion is second is to uh, table uh, item 5B till May the 6th on the agenda for uh, uh, more discussion and to bring. Uh, Commissioner Walker be allowed to be back brought back in the discussion. All in favor? I mean uh, any discussion. Wait a minute, oh any discussion, I'm sorry. All in favor. Uh, uh, opposed? I have it. Okay, Christine, there you are. The motion thank carries. You. Wonderful, wonderful. So so uh, now that that item has been tabled, we are on to item six on the agenda for information. This is mayor and commissioner's comments. All right, anyone, start it off. Mr. Commissioner Collins, uh, bad days, is that a go or no go? 
Uh, how about uh, uh, Dale? You throw in discussion along with the far works too, because we got appropriations from the tourist bureau. Uh, that's good, Dale. But we don't have that far works on their day. Well, on their day? No, no. Well, far works. We're just going to have. How about July the fourth? Well, well, let's talk about their days first. Okay. Yeah. What do y'all think about their days? I think it's too late for this. Is Richie? I think it's too late for their day. It's just my opinion. It's too. It, it's less than a, a month and a half of what away, and it usually takes a year yeah. to get ready for their day. I agree, Richie. Yeah. But I, I hate to say that. I hate to say that. This is uh, Eddie. I, I agree with Richie. I, I think we should still vote on a Manio Citizen of the Year this year and and uh, get it to them. However, we do that, but then I, I think uh, there it is. It's probably too far, too close for planning and budgeting right now. All right. Anyone else? Yeah, I agree. This is this is Christine. Um, I don't think we need to take the staff away from, uh, you know, more pressing matters right now. Um, I mean, Dare Day is a great event, but it's not essential at this point. And, you know, I feel like maybe we can salvage the 4th of July and, you know, or we can have a bigger celebration of some kind, you know, when all this is over. All right. Anyone else? Yeah, I mean. Uh, I agree. Go ahead, Betty. I said I agree. This is uh this is Jason. I, I think we all hate it, and uh, you know, I mean, I hate to say yeah, it's canceled because you know, I mean, the the thought of pushing it back was um, more just that we're gonna have to do something to uh, bring up spirits when we get past this thing, but uh, um, it, it doesn't it doesn't have to be called dare days or anything formal well you know people are going to want to come out so um yeah i mean as far as dare days as we know it it's probably ain't going to happen all right james do we need a motion to, to vote formally to cancel dare days for 2020 or what um uh, no sir um i i know that the board had previously discussed there by about the potential for postponing it but i can go ahead and announce the can't I know we've had a lot of cancellations recently. But, all right, let's cancel their days until uh, 2021. That's what the other boards on the beach, I mean, uh, with other things, uh, situations they had. Yes, sir. We'll put that announcement out. Uh, we'll put that announcement, announcement out within the week and also put it on our website and other places so people are aware. But we'll come back We'll come back stronger in 2021. All right. Now, far worse, do we want to talk about, the, talk about it later? If, if you'd like, Mr. Mayor, we can defer that conversation to the May meeting. Um, okay, that's good. Let's, let's May, table it till um, uh, May 6th. just defer it till uh, the May 6th meeting. Yes, sir. All right. Any further comments from anyone? This is Richie. I have one comment. What is the uh, timeline on the town website as of today? What do we know? Actually, we. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, uh, yes, Commissioner Burke. We had, uh, we actually had to go through a web a website update. Um, we, I, I will get, I will get a new a new timeline out to the board. We were in working with our vendor. There were there were a couple of structural issues on the back end of the site. Uh, mm -hmm. um, had a we had our our little cross functional team actually reviewing it last week and uh, preparing new content. But I hesitate to give a date right now because we need Granicus to give us a final on when they're going to deliver. Uh, the back end and the navigation stuff. So I, if it's all right with you, I will communicate back to the board uh, when we do department head reports next month, if that's okay. Okay, I was just wondering because I've been asked and it's been going on for four years now about the supposed website with nothing to happen yet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're, uh, <laughs> I, I don't uh, know. Yeah. <laughs> let me, let me, James, James, will you be able to give us a firm timeline May the 6th? Um, yes. Okay. That, uh, Rich, is that satisfying? Yes. Yes, sir. Firm. Fine. Perfect. All right. Perfect. All right. Thank, thank you, Bobby. Uh, anybody else? Anything? Yes. Uh, this is Commissioner Walker. Um, kind of speaking to that, to Richie's point. Um, well, not really, but, um, do we know how many people do we have still listening right now, James? 
Yes, uh, Commissioner Walker, we are showing uh, we're showing ten attendees um, on the on the on the call in line. It was beyond that beyond, okay. of course, the mayor and board of commissioners. So ten on our list okay. here now. Our peak was fifteen. Okay. Um, yeah, I want to thank everybody for hanging in there. Uh, I know it's not the easiest way, you know, for us to conduct business, but it is what it is at this point. Um, and I would like to have maybe with the um, that website discussion um, on the sixth, if if Carl Woody could get us maybe um, uh, a number of how many views or how many hits we're getting on our meetings that are um, online. I'm not sure. I know there's uh, a YouTube access, um, and I'm assuming through the town's website. You can also access the meeting, uh, but I'm just interested in how many people are tuning into those uh, versus how many are, you know, attending the what we were having in person meetings. Um, after a year, you know, we've had this uh, uh, televised. Um, and also, if Gina is still on uh, is on the line, I she had mentioned masks and hand sanitizers. Um, for Bay Tree, um, and I just wondering, you know, if there's a need out there that's not being filled, to please let us know, um, or even let me know right now if she, you know, if she's still there. But, um, you know, hopefully, because I know that there's people, there's people that don't come to the meetings, there's people that are not going to contact this town, but we have people that are hurting, that need help, that need help, you know, now. Um, you know, it's hard doing this, these meetings over the phone, you're not seeing people. Um, but, you know, we, our town is fortunate and we need to be able to help people, businesses and residents. Um, you know, we don't know how long this is gonna last. Like I said, I'm out of work and I know this was just a part-time gig for me, but you know, the longer this goes on, this is cutting into, you know, whether people can pay for groceries and other essentials or pay their water bill um you know buy diapers we you know we need to be cognizant of that um you know i know we want to help everybody um you know but we do if, you know especially those that are that can demonstrate a need which is what the business relief plan and the resident relief plan would do so i just you know i just like to make that known that um, you know, the mechanism was there in place to help people, and right now it's just been put off. So, um, you know, I just want to thank y'all for considering it at a later time. All right. I mean, the $600 that Mr. Bachman speaks of, that's up to $600 for federal unemployment. That is for people who were full time. Um, that is not a given of $600 per person. So, we do not need to put uh, you know, that out there that people are going to get $600 in addition to their unemployment. That is up to $600. All right. Thank you, Christine. Anyone else? This I is Eddie Mann. I have a, Go ahead, Eddie. I have a few things. Um, so I have a few things for manager. Um, I'd like to see some weekly updates from the county COVID task force, um, town specific. So if there could be some way for you to update um, all the residents, maybe on the website, the Facebook page, but um, some kind of weekly update to what's what the state of the town is uh, with the COVID task force that's going on throughout the county. Um, and then um, another thing is um, the town commons. I'd like to see a, a, a timeline for the town commons, a start date maybe, uh, when we'll see some groundbreaking. I think now, being that uh, traffic is slow, would be a perfect time to start start getting things done around town, um, and a way to generate some revenue for people in the trades. We can get some uh, trade work done around town, maybe contribute to the local economy like that. Um, another thing, um, I'd like if the if the board would like to, I'd like to. Uh, see on a later date uh, we visit the uh, zoning ordinance about boat lifts in town there's um, it's specific for marinas and i think there's about 150 slips that could benefit from uh, removing the ordinance about boat lifts and that would generate um, some tax 
revenue to the town if we had that tax base of boat lifts added to boat slips. Um, and I think that's it. I hope that's it. I had a million things on my mind. <laughs> okay, thank you, Eddie. <laughs> I heard somebody else say something. What, Betty? Was it you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just wanted to uh, echo what Christine was saying. We are very, very concerned about our businesses, our residents, everywhere, everywhere. Everybody's hurting, and we're certainly concerned about it, um, about you. And we are hoping that the town can have some resources, maybe through the um, Small Business Association at COA. I'd like to see us try to help our businesses get online and being able to get the application uh, process started and ended for our small businesses. I think that we need to help them that way if we can. Um, to the time staff, we should establish that. And also, I'm going to add my two cents to the agenda for May. <laughs> if we could have an update on the attorney as well. Hiring an attorney where we are, where we're going. Um, I think we need an update on that as well. Thanks. Thank you, James. Your whole entire staff have put a lot of work in, and we appreciate it. All right. Thank you. So Thank you. Is that it? This is, uh, this is Jason, too. Okay, Sorry. guys. <laughs> Keep stretching this out. I got a couple of things uh, as well. Um, and, and Eddie stole some of them. I'm going to echo a little bit about that. But uh, you know the the town commons is uh is something and um if that's going to be construction that's delayed till fall or, or winter or whatever then um you know is that something that we with minimal construction we can make usable for whenever we do open back up um you know think making it into a rough parking lot um and like you said construction some of the only people that can work right now so if we can support um, whoever would be doing that work, as, as minimal as it may be, then then that just helps uh, continue to support our our own economy. Um, but as we do figure out how to best support, uh, you know, the whole um, the whole town, and somebody mentioned, you know, the whole island, really. Um, you know, I think I think we do need to start looking forward into how we do open back up. Um, you know, both driving people in as well as operationally and and James I know you always seem to be a couple steps ahead of us when we bring things up like this but um, I just want to make sure that we're figuring out this, what changes or, or things we'll need to do to be able to open back up but also there's nothing that's going to support the people in this town than driving you know what drives the economy the, the tourism when we do open back up um, and, and figuring out how best to do that through uh, different advertising uh, avenues. So that's uh, that's my two cents. Oh, and, and somebody brought up the uh, the non-resident homeowners, and um, I know that's a hot hot topic sometimes. And uh, you know, there's there's two sides to that argument, and I just want to echo that these are tough times for everybody, and I hope that we can all try to see each other's um, point of views and and treat each other respectfully. Um, it's it's tough in a lot of different ways for a lot of different folks, and the best we can do is uh, treat each other with respect and, and try to help each other out. So now I'm done. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Well, I'd like to finish with saying I'm just going to totally repeat myself from the last meeting. This teleconference is awkward as hell. I'm a people person. I love to look at people and watch their eyes and see how they're thinking and a lot of things. So we're dealing with the hand we've been dealt and it's not a good one. It's a bad situation for all of us. And Jason brought up an excellent point. We should love everybody and learn to control our tempers and all be in the same boat which we're in. Uh, I don't know when we're going to get out. I couldn't even dare think about telling you. I will say this. I have tried to be as fair as possible to the board on discussions and I ask again and again and give everybody an opportunity to speak and uh, be recognized and try to understand each situation. So I'm going to leave it right there and we're going to ask for a motion to adjourn. This is Eddie Mann. I make a motion to adjourn. All right. Second. 
Hold on a second. All right. All right. Motion by Eddie, second by, I think it was Jason, that we uh, adjourn until May the 6th. Six? That, go ahead. What? Who was going to say something? I said 6th. This is Richie. Yeah, May the 6th. Okay. All right. Uh, Y'all be safe and be careful and have a good one if you can. Thank you, Bobby. Mean adjourn.